Hello everybody, I'm here with JJ Seiler and uh, we're here to talk about decentralized science at the DSI London conference, obviously. Um, so JJ, would love to hear a little bit more about yourself and uh, yeah, what brings you here today? Yes, so I'm here uh, representing Input Output Group uh, and work for Charles Hoskinson as his chief of staff. And uh, we're here to talk about decentralized science and how Cardano, which is the ecosystem that we uh, care about the most, we did core pr uh, protocol development for Cardano at Input Output, uh, how Cardano is already funding science in a decentralized way uh, through Project Catalyst. So I'm here to encourage everybody to submit a proposal and uh, hopefully receive uh, ADA to build on Cardano. So, awesome. Yeah. So I had a little bit of a look at your website and uh, on there you spe specify uh, that you are using academic rigor um, and uh, yeah, keen process to develop software and platforms uh, for the ecosystem. So could you tell us a little bit more about how that works and, and how that could be leveraged for DSI? Absolutely. So uh, one of the things Charles likes to talk about is that when there's billions of dollars at stake or lives are at stake, you use formal methods, uh, which is a, a school of thought and a, a methodology for developing pr uh, software whereby you are very sure that things are not going to break. Uh, because if they break, there's a lot at stake. Uh, so there's been a ton of research uh, coming out of Input Output's uh, research division, uh, over 200 peer-reviewed papers, and we're committed to uh, running our thoughts and our uh, things about blockchain design, and next generation blockchain, all of that's gonna run through the peer review process to make sure that we're doing things the right way and moving safely. So whereas Web 2 is move fast and break things, Web 3, it's not so favorable. So. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, makes sense. We'd be keen to hear how uh, Input Output Global has uh, engaged with decentralized science in the past, and how do you think about engaging with the, the DSI space moving forwards? Absolutely. So um, at present, we've been very supportive of Project Catalyst, uh, which is the decentralized funding mechanism for Cardano. So community members get to vote on proposals uh, that they think are worthwhile, and then people are given grants, and they don't have to give up any equity, they don't give up anything in their company or their idea or their IP, and they receive funds directly from the protocol uh, after receiving that community support. And what's exciting about that is that that's recently, uh, and over the past 11 funds which have been successful, they've dispersed over, I think, $100 million worth of ADA, roughly. Wow. Um, it's, it's huge. Hundreds of projects have been completed on uh, through Project Catalyst in this mechanism. So uh, we're excited to see, uh, those funds have mostly been used for blockchain development, but we're very excited to see people apply for proposals related to uh, finding the intersection between synthetic bio and blockchain, or finding the intersection between uh, rare disease research and blockchain, and ways to really harness the power of community to uh, drive efforts in lots of different fields forward. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, it's very cool. And uh, what's in it for you guys? I, you say that you don't take anything back, but yeah, why do you do it and why do you find it important? Well, I, I think that um, DSI is incredibly important because there have been power brokers in, in the past that have really had tight reins on how academic uh, progress proceeds. And if there's good ideas and it's all peer reviewed and you've got subject matter experts that are willing to review those proposals, I think it's important that, uh, that we get funds directly into the hands of the people that, that are gonna do that work. Yeah. And we trust the, uh, the researchers and the community trusts researchers and proposal submitters to uh, do good work. And obviously they check in with milestones to show their progress. But what's exciting is that we trust those people. We don't have to give up, they don't have to give up ownership. They don't have to give up their ideas to, to make their dreams come true. Uh, the protocol just says, uh, we're excited about the idea that you have, and here's some funds to, to make your dreams come true. And then it's, it's a different kind of math. It's an ecosystem math. Yeah. It's a rising tide kind of math. Yeah. So it, if we are working on uh, apps and products that are also in that same e ecosystem and bridging to other ecosystems, and uh, bringing lots of great ideas uh, to, to Cardano, then everybody kind of uh, benefits from that. Uh, so I'm not necessarily saying that folks need to uh, do blockchain research, but if you find ways to, to use blockchain to drive your cause forward, that's really exciting. So. Nice. And what personally interests you about DSI? Uh, I have uh, an academic background. I did research at the University of Kansas in the physics department on uh, neutrino, uh, like a te antenna design for neutrino detection. Cool. Um, I've done literary research. Uh, I, I love ac academic uh, research. I think it's great. Um, I want to support people. I think it's very difficult. There's a huge gap between having a great idea and commercializing and, and operationalizing a great idea. They've, I've heard about that today in a lot of the DSI presentations. Uh, it's called the Valley of Death. And I think that uh, if blockchain can put you in touch with and help uh, monetize great ideas, but put you in touch with great community members that want to support your idea, that's really exciting for the future of uh, creating new companies. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah definitely agree. 
And so I think a lot of people at this conference, you know, are thinking about the applications of blockchain in decentralized science. Now, it's uh, there are some barriers, of course, and I wondered, you know, how do you guys think about those? And especially when we're thinking in terms of the the user experience, like this is a completely alien yes. thing to most researchers, and how do they, you know, how do they trust it and, and be sure that their ideas are safe? Well, I, I heard um, from Logan and Victor today uh, their speech about uh, issues of Molecule and how they were able to uh, partner great researcher with great product people and great people that know about Web3 and blockchain. And I think that's really the secret here, mm -hmm. is that it's going to take a lot of different kinds of people to uh, drive the industry forward. Mm -hmm. uh, academia is very tough. It's very difficult. It's tough to do academic research. You have to be very brave to put yourself out there and mm -hmm. create a new idea. But there's also people that have other talents and other disciplines like product management and communications and uh, media training, things like this. You've yeah. got to be able to tell the story and do it effectively yeah. uh, if you want your idea to flourish because that's how you find your community. That's how you find your people that will stick through it with you thick and thin because they believe in the idea and not just price go up. You know? mm -hmm. So you, you have to uh, pull together a group of people to really make a great product into a great company. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Input Output does really well uh, under the leadership of Tamara Hassan. Uh, we've uh, turned into a venture studio, so all of our products have turned into uh, they've turned into spin-out companies. So they all have their own leadership teams, and what's really cool is that uh, those those ideas now there's people that really care about those on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. and it takes a good team that's properly incentivized to really drive that forward and to to make an, a, what was once a good idea driven by good academic rigor mm -hmm. uh, out of our research group. Uh, the venture studio then takes and runs with that idea and creates it into a great company. So all of that sounds really great, um, but how should builders be thinking about building products, platforms, and services in the decentralized science space um, from what you've learned in your experience at IOG? What I would say is that there's a big push for projects to go right to creating a token. I think first you have to make a great team and start to understand a good product market fit uh, because lots of people rush to do that and then they get in over their heads, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, they feel horrible because the token goes to zero and they're, they're feeling horrible about it, right? Yeah. Uh, I think first get a good team together, get a great product, start to talk to the customers and see how it solves their problem and see if people are going to use your product. Uh, I think it's, it's really difficult actually to make a product uh, that, that isn't just fintech, isn't just uh, payments, isn't just on-ramps and off-ramps and uh, insular and really just uh, helping people access the blockchain itself yeah. or creating a DeFi protocol, right, and doing loans and other kind of financial instruments on chain. Yeah. Uh, for instance, there's a company called Book.io, which is building on Cardano, and you can, it's a competitor to the Kindle app. Mm -hmm. If I said, hey, give me $50,000 for any Kindle book on your phone, right? Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You, can't actu you don't actually own any of those yeah. books. Uh, they're building something where you can uh, look at a book on your phone. You mm -hmm. can actually do a, use a different app. You have the book saved as an NFT. Yeah. And that's really exciting because then you own your property when you buy the book. Yeah. Uh, that's a real product. That's yeah. something that people use. It's something people love. And I think that that's an exciting use case. Mm -hmm. So I think... Before you go into making a token, before you go into you know, doing the marketing side of it and getting that pump, it's, you, you have to start with real utility, something that really solves a problem and think yeah. about how you're gonna build uh, in Web3 first. And so. Yeah, totally makes sense. So yeah, I would be really curious, JJ, to hear what areas of decentralized science do you think are gonna be most disrupted by the, or what areas of science in general are going to be most disrupted by the decentralized science movement? Sure, I think publishing first and foremost. I think the means of distributing uh, text-based information is very light. If you think of the scale of how much data these things take up, mm -hmm. it goes text and then images and then video. So I think one of the first thing that's going to happen is that text-based things will be disrupted. It'll be very easy for people to hold an NFT and then get a ton of subscriptions airdropped to them on a regular basis, yep. which is really exciting. Uh, that You don't have to have there's no printing press anymore. They just make a copy of it and they distribute it. And in a chain like Cardano with UTXO-based accounting, you can just send out a bunch of NFTs in one transaction. You just do an airdrop immediately and everybody gets the same information at the same time. Yeah. So I think if you have a good peer review process and you understand what kind of information you want to put out, everybody establishes a consensus and some sort of open source model, then you can distribute journal articles. You can yeah. distribute academic research directly to people's wallet. And yeah. they wake up and look, oh, there's the next drop. And there's something that they're excited about. And yeah. Uh, it cuts down the time of people having to find it, tracking it down, notifying it. It's really excellent. So, wanted to ask about Cardano and you know what is different about it that makes it uh, like high potential for DeSA. Sure. Yeah. So um, I think it's it's really great. Uh, it's a proof of stake system. Uh, so it uses a consensus mechanism called Ouroboros. So it's very 
uh, energy efficient, it's very low cost, fixed transaction fees, uh, there's no slashing penalties, um, there's no bonding period if you decide to stake. And I know that these are all terms that are kind of terms of art. Yeah. Uh, but what I mean to say is that if you have a wallet and you want to uh, delegate it to support, support a stake pool operator, you can change your delegation at any time. You can spend it out of that wallet while it's delegated. Uh, it's a really great protocol. Yeah. Um, it's uh, very energy efficient, like I said, but it's also efficient in terms of how transactions are structured. So if you want to do a drop, of 60 NFTs in one transaction, you could do that on Cardano because it's UTXO based. It's a bit like Bitcoin in that regard. Um, but it's got uh, a really bright future. It's got a really, um, I think it's gonna be more interoperable in the near future. We're using um, some technology for what we call a partner chain uh, framework that we're using from Polkadot mm -hmm. and we're building entire partner chains that can uh, use the L1, uh, that they can use Cardano as the L1 to provide security and decentralization while uh, a new chain spins up. Mm -hmm. So I think what could be cool about Cardano in the future is that if you want to launch your own chain and then eventually stop using the consensus mechanism on Cardano and use your own consensus mechanism, create your own blockchain, uh, then you can do that. And I think it'll be a platform for launching blockchains in the future. Right. And it's not quite there yet, but yeah. it's on the way. So it's, it's, it's really an exciting time. So JJ, could you tell me a little bit more about how you got into the space and, and where that all started? Yeah, well, I had a, a Bitcoin ledger back in 2010. It's kind of hard to, to believe it was that long ago at this point. I was yeah. just in, in college, just looking at what Bitcoin was. It was a new idea. Um, I got much more interested in it as I saw you know, big events like Mt. Gox happen and the exchange crash and uh, things like the DAO hack and the Ethereum network. Um, these big news events, they really caught my interest. And by 2017, I was all in. I mm -hmm. put, um, you know, you, you start to buy tokens and start to understand digital assets and how wallets work and how these networks are different from one another and how the blockchains are different from one another. Mm -hmm. And it just slowly got to the point where I was in the Cardano community in DC. And I like to joke that I, I was the community member that somehow made it to to work at the, at the mothership, so mm -hmm. to speak, to work with uh, the folks working on core protocol development alongside the Cardano Foundation and Emergo and uh, us at Input Output. Mm -hmm. So I met Charles and we hit it off and I started working as his assistant and uh, we just have never stopped working. So we've just been doing that for the next past two and a half, three years now. So, really nice. Yeah, slow roll, we came out of the community and then uh, decided to, to make the jump and do it full time. Yeah, so. no, that's a, a parallel story to a lot of our community members as well. And yes. it's, it's, I mean, it gives me energy working in the space to see that, that growth and that, that happening and people getting to positions of influence and, and, and power. Well, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a testament to uh, the decentralized nature of this. I was just making YouTube videos and just trying to understand what was happening in the space and try to aggregate good information. And then now I'm working for the CEO of uh, a firm uh, that is contributing resources to the core protocol development. So it's, it's, it can happen. I am very excited about the possibility of folks here creating a catalyst proposal, uh, winning uh, some ADA to build their project out. Mm -hmm. And I think success looks like a couple projects launching from just attending and talking about this at DSI. And they yeah. actually don't have to come for me, to me for permission. Yeah. They can just write a great proposal, find some great reviewers, uh, and talk with the community and see if uh, they, they get the response uh, about their idea. And I, they don't, I'm not a necessarily a power broker in a yeah. decentralized system. It's pretty great. So. Yeah. If you could wish one thing into existence in, in the decentralized science space uh, over the next year, what would that be and, and why? I think we, we touched on it a little bit before, is that I think that um, it would be really wonderful if we could build out a robust user experience so that people that have a great idea know where to submit it, they know what timeline they're going to receive funding if their proposal is approved. And we have a lot of that in place with Project Catalyst. Um, in the next year, I would hope to see a variety of different kinds of academics submit a proposal to uh, receive funding from uh, the Cardano blockchain protocol. And not just blockchain. I think if we start to see some synthetic bio proposals, we see some rare diseases uh, proposals submitted to see if they can get funding to build out community on, yep. on a blockchain, I think that would be a huge win for us. Uh, so one step, I think we need to improve the process a little bit more of how it actually works to get a proposal mm -hmm. done. And I think that uh, seeing a, a, a lot of different kinds of proposals submitted would be hugely uh, encouraging. Yep. And I think that that's the direction we're going. So I hope we see it. So. Nice. And could you tell us a little bit more about what you've seen in the past in terms of yeah, what, what kinds of proposals are oh, yeah. coming in? All sorts of proposals. So I encourage anybody that has a really great idea to submit a proposal. We see media organizations submit, uh, events organizations, people doing uh, product development, things that they want to turn into entire companies. Mm -hmm. um, you can start with a, a catalyst proposal, which is really exciting. 
Um, I'm also very encouraged to see that governance in Cardano is going to change too. Right. So there's going to be more ways to participate, more ways to uh, drive the protocol in a way that you think is important. And hopefully Cardano ultimately becomes a place where people want to build, uh, and where people uh, find a, an intelligent, thoughtful community of scientists, academics, researchers, engineers, product managers, media folks, all sorts of different kinds of people, and they can yeah. pull together to make a great, uh, a great impact in the world. Yeah, no, I definitely agree, and I think that's another exciting thing about decentralized science is that social engineering component yes. where you're just bringing together the best people in ev every different industry and, and trying to make things happen in the world. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, JJ. It's been awesome chatting to you. Um, and yeah, really, really great pleasure to, to speak about these subjects. Of course, thank you for having me. No, uh, it was a pleasure. And uh, yeah, for anyone that wants to be a part of this amazing community and potentially build the next platform or product for decentralized science space, then be sure to join the community. Uh, there's a Telegram group, um, there's a YouTube channel as well. Um, so make sure you're, you're subscribed and keeping track of everything that's going on in the space.